Hey guys, what's going on? Drewsy here, back again with another South Park Phone Destroyer video and another monthly meta for the month of September here in 2020. Uh, this is a series that a lot of you really enjoy and really like, and I have made some decent changes to the meta this uh, this month. Uh, I was a little lazy with the monthly meta last month. I felt like I needed to give it the true proper overhaul that it deserved from uh, the previous couple of months with some of the changes that have been come to the game there were some very surprising changes that came with this most recent uh, patch no or most recent balance changes that came out of the game uh, all the Wendy cards except for Shieldmate and Wendy got a lot of love and Mr. Mackey got a surprising buff as well as as some other cards so we have highlighted of course as always all the themes and we have ranked them in these categories here with G being the best uh, cards that I think in each theme a being basically good cards not amazing B okay cards but could be better and C cards are generally cards that need some improvement at some point uh, that's just how I've ranked them and as always we're going to start with adventure and work our way through the themes and then at the very end I will give you what I think is the best themes in the game right now according to a bunch of different reasons that I'll give you as we go along here. So let's start with adventure per usual and work our way to superheroes. But again, we'll go with adventure first. All right, guys, so looking at adventure, there has not been a ton of change, I don't think, from what I've done with this theme specifically. I have made some changes and I have bracketed them accordingly. So, of course, the newest card added to the game was Frontier Bradley, who I think is in G tier. I do not think this is the strongest Bradley in the game, nor the strongest epic card in the game. I don't necessarily view him as OP. He is very good. I'm not saying he's a bad card. Uh, he just provides value as far as making certain cards, mostly fighter cards, that really weren't that great and making them more playable because of his ability that he provides. Giving that AoE attack to basic attack fighter cards that don't have an AoE is really nice. So it makes like Swordsman Garrison and this theme better. It makes Hokan Clyde a little bit better. It makes Pocahontas Randy even better, which is scary to think because he's already pretty strong. So uh, th those are just some examples. Obviously, Som would get an AOE attack as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just makes some cards a little bit more fun and playable to play. But again, I don't think he's necessarily overpowered. He is in the G tier, so to many of you who are thinking, well, that means he's overpowered, right? Not necessarily, it just means that he's a very solid card, which is why he's in there. As far as A tier, I've made no changes, I don't believe, to the A tier from previous uh, patch notes. Uh, I did highlight Bedia Sally here in B tier. She did get a buff, uh, allegedly, in this most recent balance changes. I don't know how good it really is, because to be honest, I haven't really played Benita Sally. I don't play Benita Sally very much. So, to those of you that actually play her, have you seen a noticed, or have you noticed any big difference in Benita Sally? I haven't noticed any increase in play in Legendary Arena, and I haven't seen her. I mean, she's a common card to cost fighter unit with no charge ability, so I don't see her being super overpowered regardless of the change they made to her. But if you guys notice a significant difference, let me know. But that's why she's still in B tier, because I don't think she's made a significant jump, in my opinion, to warrant a move up to A. Uh, Captain Wendy as well got a buff in this most recent update. I haven't seen an increase in her play either. I haven't. I don't have her to 6 yet. She's very close for me. I need like 30 or 40 copies to get her level 6. I feel like once I see her at level 6, I'll kind of know how valuable she can possibly be. But until that point, I don't see Captain Wendy being like eons better to the point that you immediately throw her in A. Just because cards receive a buff doesn't mean they go up tiers, in my opinion. I mean, sometimes they do, but not always. I have moved down Outlaw Tweak from B to C. I don't see Outlaw Tweak used at all in high level ladder, and not even really in high silver. I've seen him at low level silver. Only as an event card do I see him generally used. And I saw him in bronze for a little while, but he's just too high of cost, and he doesn't provide the level of value that I think he warrants. So I've put him in C because I don't think he's that great of a card right now. That's just my opinion. So you may argue with that, but that's okay. Uh, let's. That's pretty much it for adventure. Let's just go into sci-fi. All right, guys. So looking at sci-fi here real quick, uh, we have gold bracketed uh, space pilot Bradley here in the G tier. He did receive a nerf. So the nerf that he received was to lower the, uh, I believe, the stun duration of his charge to, uh, of his ability that he gives out to the units or assassins when they spawn in. Uh, that has kind of made it to where there, it's a little bit easier to deal with him. But as a unit, he's still good. His val his ability still provides a ton of value for assassin units. Uh, it doesn't make him quite as annoying as it once did. Um, I still think Dar needs to be tweaked a little bit, Red Links. But um, I think that Space Pilot Bradley is still a strong card. I still think he deserves to be in G tier, so I haven't moved him down. 
Uh, we did go bracket Sizzler Stewart. I think Sizzler Stewart is one of the most balanced legendary cards in the entire game. He's not overpowered. He's not underpowered. But I don't know if he's necessarily an A tier. I don't think he's a G tier. Uh, but he's definitely... I feel like he's A. But I feel like there might be a situation where... Unless you have Sizzler Stewart to a reasonable level... He's not viable in Legendary Arena at all. Which is kind of weird to think that... With some of these Legendary cards and even Epic cards... You can have them at low level. Dar and Space Pilot Bradley pretty much prove that point. That regardless of level, they're still viable and still can be used in Legendary Arena. You could say Frontier Bradley as well. But with Sizzler Stewart, it seems like if he's not at least level 3... And maybe level 4, you don't see him at all. And uh, you see him a lot in the events where he is a card, obviously, because a lot of people, there's a decent amount of people that have a level 5, maybe, say, uh, six, 6 Element Randy. So they're able to play him at level 5 and, and see his value. But even at level 5, he doesn't feel overpowered like some might be at level 5, or at least at, even at level 4. So I think he's just an extremely balanced legendary card. That's why I highlighted him. Uh, but I think he's good. And I don't think I don't think necessarily I will move him tears anytime soon unless something drastically happens to him. For mind control, I gold bracketed because I think mind control is flirting with G tier, and that's a weird thing to say. Uh, I think mind control is being used a whole lot more because sci-fi has been used a lot lately with mystical to pair with Dar. So if you have Dar, you use mind control, whether it's through Mecha Timmy or mind control itself. Or, I guess, technically, even if you did Cyborg Kenny and it killed a unit and mind controlled them, you would take possession of that unit and then you could dar it and then it could be yours until it dies, which is pretty ridiculous. So, I feel like mind control is a much more valuable spell card now with the addition of dar, and that's why it's bracketed for me because I think that it's flirting with being a card that you almost need if you're playing sci fi, especially if you're running dar. If you're not running dar, maybe you don't need it. Uh, but it still has value, even if you don't run Dar with it. Um, Osimo, I had in G tier for a long time. I have moved him down to A tier. I, I don't see Osimo, and most tanks, in all honesty, don't seem to be getting the same level of value. I see plenty of people that run very strong decks that don't have any tanks in them whatsoever. Uh, you could say that even Sex Element Randy is a pretty beefy uh, fighter card that has a tank summon units. You can almost view him as a borderline tank. And there are some other fighter cards that kind of fit that mold and fit that build. But I've seen a lot more people run just a little bit more fast-paced decks to just go get a quick bar and then try to hold the opponent off. That really the slow methodical pushes don't seem to be as, effect, as efficient all the time. To the point to where sometimes Osimo has lost a little bit of value. I don't think he's bad or worse. He didn't get any kind of adjustments to him. I just don't see him as a tank. Yes, his freeze is super nice. And uh, the duration of that freeze is very useful if used properly. Uh, but I just think Osimo is taking a slight step back. Just because tanks as a whole pretty much have taken a step back. So that's why he's moved down to A tier. Uh, Ice Sniper Wendy received a buff. Now... It's debatable for me whether or not the buff to her is worthy of her being moved up a tier. Uh, I've kept her at B. I believe she was at... Maybe she was at C, so I moved her up to B, actually. But she's definitely not A. I don't think Ice Sniper Wendy's... I think Ice Sniper Wendy's buff was the worst one out of all of them, as far as didn't provide a ton of value to her. It gave her more value that she's not a C tier card anymore. But she's just... She's, she's really not that great to me. Some people really like Ice Sniper Wendy. She's a favorite of a, some some of my viewers that have said that they really enjoy using her. If you can find a legitimate deck that really utilizes her that would work at high tier legendary, please let me know because I'd like to try it out. I've seen the other content creators. Haze Demon has had success with Ice Sniper Wendy, as have others. Uh, it just seems like, to me, she dies too quickly and her freeze just doesn't seem to work right at the right times for me and maybe it's probably just me because i'm bad at the game but i don't really think that ice sniper wendy's buff warrants her going any higher than b so that's just my opinion we're keeping her there that's going to do it for sci-fi let's move on to mystical all right guys looking at mystical a couple of changes here and ones that might surprise you so uh angel wendy did receive a buff she's in b tier that's why she has um uh, been highlighted uh she was in c tier i moved her up to b because she definitely got a nice buff to her heal. Uh, her health was also increased. I don't think her range was increased. Maybe it was. But again, definitely received buffs to the uh, to her healing. Which is actually the best part about the buff that she received. It really makes her a little bit more viable to stay in the back line. And be able to heal up units. Which is kind of nice. Uh, I have actually moved down Regen and Hallelujah. Now that might surprise a lot of you. Again. 
because but i honestly don't see either of these two cards used hardly at all at legendary arena um i, I mean are they terrible absolutely worthless cards no i'm not saying that I'm just saying that as far as... Because most of the time, this actual focus of this monthly meta is to focus on Legendary Arena more so than lower tiered arenas. So it's not really focusing on all of the tier, all of the arenas. It's mostly focusing on gold arenas, or I'm sorry, on Legendary Arena as a whole. Uh, what cards work best to help get you to Legendary Arena, or when you're in Legendary Arena, generally cards that are going to be the strongest for you when you're up there for these respective themes. I just don't see regen or hallelujah used hardly at all. I've seen hallelujah in the... Hallelujah at one point was the meta. When they took away the bonus health you received from it, it pretty much fell out of the meta. Regen was in the meta for a long time in the early game and then has since had a very mild resurgence by maybe a handful of people, but for a about 95% of mystical players, maybe 98% of mystical players, I guarantee you they don't use any of these two cards. So... I mean, it just it just doesn't seem to be around there. Therefore, I think they need to be tweaked at some point. The healing component of other healing units, to me, is almost better than what Regen and Hallelujah have to offer. Yeah, I get that Hallelujah is an instant healing to all units on the field, but most of the time with some of the deck builds that are going out now, again, the tank meta, or most tanks, other than maybe Zen Cartman, and like Slave and stuff like that, you just don't see them that much. You see Man Bear Pig, you see so there are a couple of tanks. But for the most part, you don't see just everyone defaultly have a tank in their deck. Some do, I do in my main deck, but some people don't. Uh, because it's just not fully necessary anymore. And because of that, you lose the Hallelujah value. Hallelujah's value was to put a beefy tank, maybe a couple of beefy uh, you know, fire cards, have maybe a range card or two in the back line, and then, yeah, maybe you took some damage from Aerostorm or something like that. Or maybe you took damage from a Fireball. Maybe a few units survived. And you could just Hallelujah them all back to basically full health. Like, that was the whole purpose of it. And when they took the bonus health away, I think they just dropped it out of the meta. So I think both these cards are kind of hurting because of that. So because of that, I have moved them down to C tier. Now, I, some of you probably will vastly disagree with me on that. Say, Jersey, it should have stayed in B. Or maybe their value is higher to B and even A. And I don't, I wouldn't agree with that necessarily personally. But I just, again, don't see them much in Legendary Arena. So I think that they deserve to be kind of down a little. My opinion on that, guys. So let's go ahead and shift our focus now to Fantasy. All right, guys, we're here on Fantasy, as we mentioned. And there has been a decent amount of change also to this as well. Uh, I have highlighted Catapult Timmy, not because any changes were done to Catapult Timmy, but I feel like Catapult Timmy is an undervalued Catap uh, Timmy card right now. I think he's pretty good as a rare card. I think he's almost better situationally than Dr. Timothy right now, especially with uh, Space Flight Bradley, the fact that his rats would then get that kind of uh, you know freeze duration if Space Flight Bradley's on the field. And uh, his range is always good. He, he can be kind of a nuisance card because Timmy's generally are designed to be far in the back, have good range, it can do decent damage and be a valuable card. I think that Catapult Timmy, again, is undervalued. He's not quite to G-tier level. He's definitely an A-tier card, in my opinion. And I just think that people underappreciate him and undervalue how strong and how annoying he can actually be. That being said, there was a balance change done to Witch Garrison, which actually glitched him for a week until Red Links finally patched and fixed it, to where his actual freeze wasn't doing anything. But I think Witch Garrison has taken a small step back with... Uh, his play recently, and I'm not saying that he's necessarily worse. I mean, he went from G to A, so I guess he's a little bit worse. But his freeze duration was allegedly nerfed. Now, some people have said that it hasn't happened quite to the effect that Red Links wanted, and that they feel like he still freezes as often as he was before, and sometimes he can use his slow, or not freeze, his slow again after he's already he can already have it back before his other slow has finished casting, which was the issue with him before. Um... I haven't seen him used as often anymore or see him be quite as a nuisance as he once was. He's still strong. He still has some value. And a lot of fancy runner users are still running him. But I just don't see him quite to the same G-ness that he once had. So he's kind of taken a mild step back for me. I think Rogue Token has seen a little more resurgence lately in the meta, in my opinion. Uh, just with some of the other cards that are kind of coming there. And I feel like his... Uh, his war cry is getting a little bit more value again with the fact that people aren't running as big bulky tanky units anymore and with paired with someone like Dragon Slayer Red 
who can lower their health, then you can just use his uh, war cry ability and do a pretty decent amount of damage and maybe kill a couple more units that you maybe weren't able to kill before. So I think the rogue token might see a resurgence up to A, but he's he's getting close to there, but I, I think he's definitely a little bit better of a card. Plus the fact that with Frontier Bradley, he'll get an AoE attack when he actually attacks if you have Frontier Bradley in your deck. So there's, there's some pros for rogue token right now. I have moved down Dwarf King Clyde from A to B. I don't see Dwarf King Clyde used hardly, I wouldn't say at all, but anywhere near as much as I used to. There was a point where Dwarf King Clyde was used an insane amount. He was almost a borderline cancel card for for a while. Um, but he's kind of seen a step back in the meta, in my opinion. Uh, again, I don't think he's necessarily worse. There hasn't been any balance changes done to him. I just don't I just don't see him as often. I don't. I think his value has diminished a little bit because there's a lot more emphasis lately on kind of swarmy style units or units that can kill him a little bit easier and his war cry has always been unpredictable and it's been glitchy and laggy for a long time i think it's currently working better now i don't really know i don't use him so i can't to be honest i don't have him to six yet i'm very close to having him to level six as well so i just don't think he's in the same level of value that he once had so that's why i've, I've given him a little bit of a step back which some of you again might disagree and that, that's fine you're open to your opinions um as far as kyle of the drow elves I moved him down to G is to C tier. Um, yeah, he can be situationally useful, but as a whole, he's not a great card right now. His 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 health stats are really bad. He dies really easily. I feel like, and uh, yeah, he can get that charge off, but unless you have Hanky, you're only going to get it really once, and that's going to be gone. And yeah, there's value there. He's still good with something like uh, a Douglas, which I, I hate to say it, but it's true. Uh, or, um, you know, other cards like that that are going to be a Headhunter-style card or something that's just going for New Kid. The, the nice part about his shield versus someone like Human Kite is that he can shield everyone on the field, where Human Kite can only shield ground units. So, I mean, again, there's pros and cons to him. I just think that he dies way too easily, therefore that kind of diminishes some of his value to me. So, I think that's why he's in C tier. I think he needs a little bit of... If you want to see him more, he needs a health buff. That's pretty much the way I'm going to go about it. But yeah, that's about it for fantasy. Let's go on to superheroes now. All right, guys, looking at superheroes and for the only theme in the game, there's no one in C tier. I know you, some of you might be shocked by that. There was one lonely card down there in C tier, which was Captain Diabetes. As you see, I moved him up to B tier. I feel like he's no longer really a C tier card. I've seen him a little bit more now. I've seen him since the buff that he received a couple of updates ago. And he's got a little bit more value. I think he's a little bit more, especially if he's used with other cards, I think that he's in a better spot right now. So he deserves to be in B. Uh, I have shifted up uh, Super Craig. I think it's been a long time coming. He, he should have been in A tier for a long time. I don't think he's quite G tier. He's definitely G tier in lower arenas. But in Legendary Arena, he's not. Um, he's definitely A. He's definitely a good common card, especially if you have him to 6. Or if you have him to 7, he's probably gross. Uh, but Super Craig, definitely worthy of being up here. I've also bracketed Fast Pass. He did receive a actually really nice buff. Even though it wasn't a huge buff, he received a buff to his overall base health, as well as his charged ability received a damage buff. And I actually enjoyed Fast Pass, but Fast Pass was a little underperforming for me versus some of the other epic cards in this theme. Now I feel like he's in a good spot. I really do like where Fast Pass is. If you place him right, he can do some really good chip damage to New Kid. I think people are people undervalued Fast Pass for a long time. I know I did, but I feel like he's in a really good spot now, and he's scary in lower arenas more so than he was before. And in Legendary Arena, he's actually really good and playable, and I really enjoy him in my main deck right now. Um, as for Call Girl, she received a much needed buff to her base stats, both health range and damage. Uh, and now Call Girl is in. I think the spot that she always needed to be in, she is now a pretty good card now. She received uh, a bunch of different buffs to get her to where she is now, whether it was what the unit she summoned based on the energy cost, as well as her overall energy cost decreased from 7 down to 6. So she's received a bunch of different changes, a lot like Jesus has over the course of months uh, since she's been introduced into the game with superheroes. Now it's been over a year now since superheroes came out. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so she's in a much better spot now, and Call Girl is actually very playable and very fun to play. So, definitely, if you have Call Girl to, uh, like, you, you were having her at level 3, and you're like, man, should I ever level up Call Girl? 
I think you should now. I think she's worth putting the investment in materials into and gold because she's in a much better spot right now. Uh, Mosquito, I did have in B tier. He deserves to be an A. He's still a viable uh, rare card. He did receive a nerf a, quite a while ago now, uh, but I still think he provides enough value. I have him in my main deck, even at a level 6 rare card, uh, and I think he deserves to be an A tier because he's a little bit better than I gave him credit for in the past, even since his nerf. I still think he's a valuable card in the game. Um, for Tupperware, I've moved him down from A to B. I did recently get Tupperware to 7, and I know what you're thinking. Well, Drew, you got him to 7, so obviously he's a good card, right? Uh, maybe. Uh, I, I don't think Tupperware is performing quite to the level that I thought maybe he could potentially be. His energy cost is a little high based on his st stat scaling. If they scaled his stats up a little bit more, I think his 4, four energy cost would be more valuable. Until then... I don't think he's uh, an A tier card right now. I think he's a B tier card right now in Legendary Arena. In lower tiers, he's he would be A, but in Legendary, he's not. Uh, as for Human Kite, Human Kite as well. Uh, I've moved him from down from A to B. Uh, he, you don't see a lot of play with him in Legendary Arena at all. Uh, in lower tiers, he's used all the time uh, because he still has value down there. But even with me having him at level 5, I don't see him being that valuable for me in Legendary Arena. Therefore, I don't think he deserves to be an A tier anymore. That's just my opinion. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for superheroes. Let's... Alright guys, looking at neutral, I've made a decent amount of changes to neutral cards as well. Mr. Mackey has gone from B, I believe, or maybe even C, up to A. Mr. Mackey's buff was huge. The amount of damage buff that he now gives out to kid units around him is tremendously better. His health scaling is nice. He makes him actually worth to play. He's fun to play now. He's nowhere near G, in my opinion, but he's definitely an A-tier card. He's definitely a fun card. He's a niche card uh, that works really well. If you have a bunch of kid units, he, he worked probably best with superheroes, and maybe, uh, obviously, all the themes have kid units in it, but superheroes is mostly Dominic, at least kids units right now, right? Uh, so... Uh, yeah, I just really like where Mackie is. He, he's very good in other game modes now, more so than just ladder. Uh, he, he did very well in Team Wars for a lot of people. He really uh, and is probably going to be great for challenge mode as well. So I think Mackie's in a much better spot and deserves to be an A. Uh, I have moved PC Principal down from A to B. I don't see PC Principal nearly as much anymore in Legendary Arena. Uh, you see him still in lower tiers. Uh, I, I'm not saying he's a terrible, terrible card. But again, tanks just have kind of taken a little bit of a backseat. Um, some of the tanks are still viable and still played, but um, I just don't see his value because he moves so quickly and he pushes units oftentimes into a more defensible position for you to be able to counter push him. I think that kind of works slightly against him um, a little bit. But if he can get to new kid, he can do some really good damage for you. So, I mean, there's pros and cons to PC Principle that always has been, but I just don't think PC Principle is... Uh, an amazing card in this meta right now for Legendary Arena, so that's why he's been moved down to B. Uh, I have moved down Mayor McDaniels and Terrence Mephesto. Mayor McDaniels, I don't know why I had her at A for so long. She doesn't deserve to be up there. She's probably one of the worst cards in the game right now. She needs a retool to really be viable. I don't really know what that's going to be. Maybe you need to change her ability 100%. Um, until that happens... I don't, I don't suggest using Mary McDaniels or really leveling her up right now. And Terrence Mephesto, I don't see him in Legendary Arena hardly at all anymore. In lower arenas, again, I see him quite a bit, but in Legendary, I don't see him hardly at all. And I just don't think he's worth being in B anymore. I think he's kind of a C-tier card. So, uh, yeah, this is probably going to be a debated one with some of these card choices, but uh, I stand by my opinion on it, at least. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for that. Let's just wrap it up the video real quick, talking about what I think are the best themes currently in the game. Alright guys, so wrapping up the video, the best themes in the current meta. Uh, Mystical still reigns atop. Yes, I know based on the, the way the meta went, you saw a lot more top tier cards in G and A for fantasy, but Mystical is so top heavy. The, the, the four or five cards that are in G tier for Mystical, to me, still outweigh almost all of the cards in fantasy, except for maybe DSR. Um, they're just so good right now. Mystical Dar is still so broken and so amazing that it just, until she's nerfed, I don't see Mystical moving anywhere, in my opinion. I feel like Sci-Fi is still nipping at the heels for fantasy, and I think that Sci-Fi has seen a huge resurgence in the meta, uh, and has been used a lot more so lately. But the biggest one that you guys will notice and will debate about, Superheroes Above Adventure Now. I think the changes to Call Girl really helped superheroes a lot more than people thought. Fast Pass again 
is a very useful epic card now. I don't think there's any card in superheroes that needs a drastic change other than maybe Tupperware might be the closest one. Um, that's it. I mean, all their cards are playable in all of the arenas. In Legendary Arena, Superheroes has seen a remergence that I have not seen before. I've seen a lot more people play it. I'm not saying it's anywhere near to the level of what Mystical is used, Sci-Fi, or Adventure. Adventure is used quite a bit in Legendary Arena. Adventure is very top-heavy. The G-tier cards that I have in here are the best Adventure cards, hands down. And then, really, they don't have anything else that's really super spectacular other than, other than what I have in G. I mean, some of their A-tier cards are very playable and still useful, but Adventure just is top heavy again but their top heavy is nowhere near to the level that mysticals is in my opinion so i think adventure is very much a theme that is very dependent on its secondary theme it's not a standalone theme it can't hold its own by itself my superheroes deck pretty much has almost all superhero cards but yet three or four and i can pretty much hold my own but superheroes is a niche theme too it does need a little bit of help i'm not saying it does that you can run just a superheroes deck and dominate that's not what i'm saying at all but uh, I think that's a little bit better off with some of the changes that have been made with some of the cards recently that put superheroes a little bit stronger over adventure, in my opinion. I know this is going to be the most debated part. This usually is. And some of the more top-tier players above myself uh, will argue with me on this. And that's fine. They're entitled to their opinion. But based on what I've seen in the current... Since the balance changes have come in over the last couple of weeks, I have seen a resurgence of superheroes in the legendary arena superheroes are all over the place in bronze and silver that's never going anywhere but in legendary they're a little bit more playable now and i kind of like that because i like superheroes but i also kind of liked it being kind of an underdog theme too it was kind of more gratifying beating that but that's just my thoughts and feelings on the best themes in the current meta and the monthly meta as a whole i know this video was a little bit long i do apologize for that but I felt like I really need to give insight as to why I made some of the decisions that I made with some of these cards and the changes that I made within the meta as a whole. But what do you guys think? As always, you always let me know down below in the comment section how you feel about my monthly meta videos. And I will continue to try to keep pushing these out each month that I deem it necessary here going forward on the channel. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, guys, my name is Drusy.